Hi, I'm Maria Theohara Silvelisos. Welcome back to Soul Organized Style Podcast, featuring textile artists for the upcoming Making Zen Online Retreat. Grab a cuppa and relax with us. On Soul Organized Style Podcast, I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we record this podcast and pay respects to the elders past and present. Thanks for joining us on Soul Organized Style Podcast. Kate Ward is running the Making Zen Online Retreat from the 24th to the 28th of October. And I'll be featuring some of the textile artists contributing to this retreat. Previous Making Zen Online Retreats have had a large range of artists that have been wonderful to learn from. Kate Ward is here to help kick off the upcoming Making Zen Online Retreat. Good morning, Kate. Hi, Maria. How are you? Really good and lovely to see you again. You too, likewise. It's always so nice to catch up. It is. I love catching up with you. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. You're a wonderful guest. And in case listeners don't know, there are, are 10 Kate Ward podcasts to listen to. Is that so? Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think I could talk that much. <laughs> Okay, they're all really good topics. <laughs> You're really good at researching. Uh, well, that goes to show that's why it's such a lovely pleasure to be back again. We have a good rapport. We do. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Look, how do you find such amazing textile artists that we can learn from at every single Making Zen Online retreat? Actually, someone was asking me a similar question the other day and I was like, oh, how do I do all this kind of stuff or who is the audience or something like that and I'm like well I have Instagram to thank so that's probably the first place where I look at all these things and because my interests in textiles are so varied it means that the people that I follow are also so varied and you know Instagram's pretty wonderful at popping up people that you might like or that kind of thing so that's kind of how I find a lot of these people is I see something that they make and I'm like, wow, that's really beautiful yeah. and I follow along. And for me, I think the retreat is I get to reach out to all these most amazing artists and get to collaborate with them. So it's a really wonderful experience. Yeah, it is. From a participant's point of view, which is my point of view, the range and the depth of artists that you've had on the Making Zen Online Retreat. They have such amazing talents that they're happy to share with people. Yeah, and that's, I guess, part of the, you know, like one of the criteria as well is they have to be very interesting in what they do. So it's it's not just a craft, it's an art as well. So they're artists and they're really pushing boundaries and pushing techniques and doing something new with what they're doing. So it's, you know, it's not just embroidery, it's embroidery with a twist or it's not just weaving, it's weaving with flair. I always am very mindful of who follows me and I'm always wondering what they would be interested in. So I'm always on the lookout for interesting people. So I'm always thinking about who's going to participate and what they might be interested in too. Listeners will be able to hear from some of the textile artists who are going to be on the retreat in upcoming podcasts this month too. Yeah, that's going to be such a treat. It's so wonderful. I'm looking forward to hearing them too. Yeah, they're all lovely. Can you walk us through what's happening with the upcoming Making Zen Online Retreat? Yeah, so like you were saying, it runs from Monday the 24th of October through to Friday the 28th of October. And on each day, we've got four different artists who will be presenting workshops in the various skills that they have. And it ranges from all kinds of things like embroidery. We've got Lorna Crane making a textured cloth book. And that's pretty special. Lorna is an Australian artist and she's very well known for her sculptural brushes. So she likes to create using paintbrushes from found objects and materials. She's a real gem and I'm really excited to have her on board. And it's just so unusual. That's going to be a, a real treat. We've got some totally fascinating artists from literally all corners of the world. And that for me is so exciting. We've got gold work. So an artist from the UK, Hannie Newton, she's going to show us some gold work techniques, which I'm super excited about. 
we've got Jen Duffin and she's from Canada and she is going to do some circular weaving. So that's going to be super wonderful. We've got Youngman Lee and she's going to teach us some Bujagi. I always stumble over how to pronounce that, but the Korean technique of sewing cloth together. So I'm super excited about that. We've got Ruth Woods from Australia as well. We've got artists from Amsterdam. Oh my goodness, there's so many different people. I don't know where to start first, but the the really wonderful thing is no technique is going to be doubled up and there's just going to be 20 different activities and workshops that you can learn learn from and make cool things too. That is definitely one of the draw cards for me is the range of artists from many countries and many cultures. That's what keeps it interesting, I think. The Facebook group that participants have access to when they're part of the Making Zen online retreat, that allows us to continue to experiment and apply those techniques in that group and encourage each other. Yeah, yeah, that is such an awesome group and it still continues to thrive even Mm. between the Making Zen retreats because the last one was in May of this year and it's so awesome to see what people do. What I really love, and it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it, is people watch all the different presentations Mm -hmm. and then they'll combine techniques. So they might take one technique and combine it with another technique And so you end up with these really interesting projects at the end of it where you're combining a whole lot of different things all at once. So it really is a great place to go and get inspired, share your projects with others as well. Like it's it's the best community ever. I love it. Seeing the various takes on the skills just continues on. You know, the one in May, we're now in October. Mm. That's a long time to keep inspiring people. Yeah. Well, I also think in part it was because there was so many interesting projects to do Mm. in that um, retreat. Literally, you could keep going for years, you know, once you've learned it, then apply it, then practice it some more and then make it your own. It doesn't surprise me in some senses that it's continuing. At the same time, it's super awesome. And it's so exciting that people are still interested and still enjoying sharing Mm. their projects and getting inspired. What I really like about it is it attracts artists and participants from all levels. Yeah, It doesn't matter if you're a total beginner or whether you're quite an accomplished artist, everyone comes together, shares what they're doing. And the encouragement is just so lovely too. Like it's such a warm group. It's It really is. And that to me is so heartwarming. Again, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. I just love that people love it. <laughs> The amount of feedback that I've received from people who participated in the last Making Zen. I recently received an email from one lady and she was in New York. She was an Aussie. She, in fact, just lives down the road from where my dad lives. So that's totally crazy. But her son was undergoing chemo at the time. And she's like, thank you so much for Making Zen. It couldn't have come at a better time when I needed something to do with my hands, but I couldn't concentrate on anything else. And I've received so many heartfelt thanks from people participating who have followed along and gotten so much more than just a making technique. It really has touched many people at a heart level, which is so important for me because I guess that's where the Zen as the Zen stitching comes in. I have this most amazing ability to share these most amazing artists with everyone too. And so it's just such a wonderful way of connecting people and, and that's kind of what I see my role in all of this is the connector. For the listeners who are interested in taking part in the Making Zen Online Retreat, what do they need to do? That's a really good question. And the easiest way of finding out more about it is just to go to makingzen.com and that's the best place where you can sign up. You can get a free ticket, which means that you get to access each of the presentations per day for 24 hours. So that means presentations on a Monday last for 24 hours, presentations on a Tuesday last for 24 hours and that kind of thing. And you also have the option of purchasing a VIP ticket, which means that once the event is launched, you get access to it immediately. So that means that you don't have to wait until the 24th of October. You can sign up and get started straight away, which, you know, is pretty exciting. 
And there's also an additional incentive to buy early as well or sign up early, and that is you get the special price of $47. So once the, the event starts, that price will go up. So it's a real added benefit of signing up early. Okay, thank you for going through the details about what we can expect from the retreat and how people can take part in the retreat, whether it's just for the day or if they want to have long-term access to the videos and the courses. It's a lot to take in in one day, like in a 24-hour time period, but people have those options and thank you for providing those options. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing too. So for people who might have the time but can't afford it, you've got the option of watching them all. You can binge watch, you can catch them all and, you know, make along with them. Or you don't have the luxury of time and you'd like to come back and watch them at a later date, you most certainly can do that too with the the VIP ticket. The wonderful thing too is when you purchase the VIP ticket, it gives you lifetime access too. So it means there's absolutely no rush to sit there and try and cram it all in. Many of the artists have provide bonuses on top of what they're presenting for the workshop. They might be PDF patterns or additional workshops that they also provide. We've got a really exciting just compilation bundle of different things that you can learn during and beyond from that VIP ticket. So yeah, it's it's kind of covers everything for everyone. Sounds like a smorgasbord of learning options. Yes. Yeah. Smorgasbord of fun. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I think probably I always call it being a kid in a lolly shop. You can't choose. There's so many good things. I think I know quite a lot of people who participated in the last event, they're still working through many of the different workshops because it was just so jam-packed full of goodness. And this one's going to be exactly the same. So I'm so excited. I can't wait to share it with everyone. I think for people in the Northern Hemisphere, now that it's starting to get colder, this is probably the right time to get involved, like to to take up these options so that they've got something to keep them going through (laughs) the cold months. Absolutely. Yep. And the other nice thing too about this time of year is it's when people are starting to think about Christmas presents. So if you're the kind Mm. of person that likes to make and give thoughtful presents, then a lot of the workshops are geared towards that as well. So they're projects that are feasible and you can make and then you can gift them. So you're gifting yourself the most amazing experience of creating because I always think that's the best. But then you can share that with others as well. So it's kind of like a win-win for everybody. You get to make and then you get the joy of giving as well. Yeah, I never thought of that. So one of the things that is important to me is mindful living and zero waste. So in that sense, it's kind of incorporating a lot of those different ethics as well. So you're making a mindful gift. It's practicing mindfulness for yourself as well. And many of the projects within the retreat are zero waste or ask you to look at using recycled materials. So there's a whole lot of different options in there too. And and that's something that I think is awesome. And I love that you're given options. So for example, with Annie Newton and her gold work embroidery, I'm sure a lot of us don't have a whole lot of gold thread hanging out at home. And she's going to teach us ways on how to take that technique, but use other things. I don't want to spill the beans, but I think, I think she's going to teach us how to do it with straw, maybe. Oh, hmm. Okay, don't give it away. (laughs) No, I won't give it away. (laughs) And don't hold me to that. No. (laughs) She's going to teach us some really cool things. And so that's what I love about it. It's thinking outside the box using materials that you have at home rather than having to go out and buy a whole lot of stuff because that's what I'm always about. Use what you have before you go out and buy. Very good point to finish up on. Yeah, use what you have. Because I know most of us have got nice craft cupboards full of stuff. Go shopping in your own craft cupboard. You've talked about those points of being mindful and reusing in your previous podcast. So this is in keeping with your point of view about using what you have, but also being mindful and mindful not only of yourself, but of how you impact the environment. Yeah, I think going back to the question of 
How do I find my artists? A lot of them meet that criteria, probably mm. unconsciously, but that's something that is an underlying passion for me. But it also comes through in the artists that I've asked to participate. Thank you for that. Kate, thank you for coming back onto the podcast to help launch the Making Zen online retreat on Soul Gunai Style Podcast. Thank you, Maria. It's always awesome to chat with you. I can't put it into words. I love it. It's so much fun. I love catching up with you, Kate. <laughs> oh, me too. And thank you. <laughs> Benito. <laughs> this episode for the Making Zen Online Retreat on Soul Gunai Style Podcast was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, with permission of Kate Ward, sound by bensound.com. You can subscribe to Soul Organized Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps. Make sure you go back and listen to our free Making Zen Online Retreat Podcast Archive. And if you can, consider supporting the production of this podcast on Patreon. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>